one of, quite honestly, the biggest mysteries in all of video games has finally been solved. It's an old story dating back to the early 90s. What the hell is Star Tribes and what happened to it? And it's a story that's got all the makings of a timeless classic. Early 90s gaming magazines, CD-ROMs, claymation. Back in the year 1990, adverts started to appear in magazines for a DOS game called Star Tribes Myth of the Dragon Lord. It promised incredible graphics, a futuristic role playing adventure of epic proportions, and dazzling clay animation characters, which were a big deal at the time. It was created by Spinnaker Software, a company actually better known for producing business applications. The adverts promised the game would arrive very soon, but it never happened. Star Tribes disappeared into the mists of time never see in the light of day. So what was this game that promised so much claymation but never released? And why didn't it ever come out? Well, that monumental mystery that's hung over the games industry like Jacob Marley's ghostly chains for almost three decades has finally been solved. And who solved this greatest of mysteries? A uh, Twitter boy, but it was actually it was actually just a Twitter bot. Twitter user at Awesome Monster recently spotted the tweet from the at GIFs underscore bot account. The automated account tweets out images from the GIFs Galore CD-ROM, which is a collection of GIFs assembled and distributed by Walnut Creek CD-ROM back in 1992. One of the GIFs it tweeted out, which you can see right here, looked like it came from CDI game Laser Lords. But here comes the earth-shattering twist. This was credited as being a GIF from the lost game, Star Tribes. It turns out that what we now all know and love as Laser Lords was actually an evolution of Star Tribes, the game we all assumed was lost. Many people back then who were easily hyped up by a few simple adverts in magazines, thanks to the no YouTube and that, had assumed the game was canceled. It just wasn't meant to be. No mate, it just turned out to be Laser Lords, didn't it? Myth pounded. <laughs> Good. That was sick. That was good. You should have done like a back to back. I went for a bit. Yeah, then never mind. The thing is, yeah, if you're into Walnut Creek CD ROM collections from 1992, which, you know, who isn't? Yeah, this is a story for you. But for you youngins that might not remember GIFs and that, we've got a little bit more, a little bit extra on this story. We've gone the extra mile to provide for people that might not care about Laser Lords. And if you are part of the small minority that isn't a huge Laser Lords <laughs> fan, We've got a bit more. What's, we got Sorry. a bit more yeah. for you. Yeah, we got pretty excited about the story before we actually finished reading it and realised it wasn't wasn't actually that interesting, to be honest. But then it got us thinking: what other myths and mysteries out there that have been solved, and you know, maybe have better conclusions to them this time, please? Welcome to Myth Pounders. Super Mario 64 was released in 1996 for the Nintendo 64 and pretty much blew everyone who played it away. It's considered a gaming masterpiece by many and is one of the highest rated games of all time. People were diving deep into the game's content pool and trying to unravel the game and its mysteries from day one. But six years after release in 2002, a forum poster on game FAQs had discovered that there was a strange coin on a level Tiny Huge Island. Unlike the other 191 coins of Tiny Huge Island, this coin was different. It was unobtainable. The Mario community dubbed this the impossible coin, but in 2014, a full 18 years after the game's release, YouTube person PanenCoec2012 managed to collect the coin. Loading the game in an emulator and using the built-in tools like slow motion and frame-by-frame -frame advancing, PanenCoec's video is testament to what could be achieved by those with inhuman reflexes and patience. So the mystery coin had finally been collected, but not without the help of an emulator and the associated trickery therein. So has this myth been Founded. Who can really say there was a coin, couldn't get it, then someone got it by cheating. Let's have a look at another one. Yeah. Leaving your name or initials hidden in a project you worked on is an age-old technique used by many in the design field, from Disney to Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong on the Atari 400 contained the initials of the developer, Landon M. Dyer, somewhere in the game. But exactly where they were took gamers 26 years. 26 years to discover. Players needed to die with a score containing a certain digit combo, lose their last life by falling, and then set the difficulty level to four. And then the next time the title sequence loads up, there you have it. L-M-D. Wow. 
worth it. What do you think? I don't, I'm embarrassed about that one, frankly. I don't want to talk about it. And if you're sat there thinking, hey, all of these stories have been shite so far, well, get ready for a quite all right one. GoldenEye on the N64 was an absolute game changer for many people. People have extracted nearly every iota of information from its cartridge. It's got extra modes, it's got glitches, Easter eggs, but it has one feature that wasn't discovered until 2012. That's 15 years after the game was released. Rare, the developers behind the game, were working on an emulator of the ZX Spectrum, which for some reason exists in its entirety on the GoldenEye cartridge. It seems instead of removing the code from the cartridge, Rare just patched over it. You can play this yourself with an N64 emulator with the right technical know-how. That's actually a pretty good one. There's like a whole oh, emulator, including the games. Do you know if someone's ever coming around your house, like, and you've only got like a certain bit of food and like ham, but it's quite shit. Mm. You think ham sandwiches aren't get, gonna be enough. So then you try and scrape together all little little things from like your pantry to make shit ham sandwiches and shit cheese sandwiches. Yeah, That's what this tuna, is like. You've got tuna sandwich in there. Exactly. I mean, not, who, who loves tuna? Tuna sandwiches is all right. It's not gonna spice up the ham sandwich, you know? This is a perfect example of like, um, quantity over yeah. quality, and that's what you can expect from myth pounding in the future. The new, the hot new series that's coming to pretty good gaming, average at best myths. Apart from that last one, which was quite alright. Yeah, sorry for wasting your time, everyone. Have a good day. Enjoy your afternoons, yeah. So there you go, a collection of tepid mysteries that for some reason we decided to tell you about. Let us know what you thought of this down in the comments below. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed it and please do subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this every day. There's another video right there which is a lot better, I promise you, and a link to Patreon if you want to support the channel. See you next time.